could we analyse past campaigns and where we went right, where we went wrong, and the outcome of those, and where they took us forward. One of the issues with regard to both rate capping that um, Graham raised and, and Greg's point about the poll tax was a almost a simultaneous um, period of time for protest, both in terms of the payment of court actions and then issues around setting the rate or whatever. And I, this this situation is some, somewhat different. The reason being is that I, I th it, it will be played out over a much longer period of time. We should be aware of that and prepared for it. Um, if you look at all the economic analysis um, that has come forward, even from the right now, um, the understanding of where the economy is, leave aside the government's position, but most objective analysis now, as I say, even from the right, have recognised that um, if, we're not in, if we don't go to a double dip recession, we'll most probably bounce along the bottom of economic growth uh, or economic activity for a long period of time, maybe for the next four or five years. And in addition to that, if there is any elements of recovery, if you look at what happened in the early 90s, it's certainly what's happened elsewhere, is elements of a jobless recovery, so therefore high levels of unemployment associated with any future economy. And I think, although we have the comprehensive spoke, let's start back on the last government introduced 30 billion pounds worth of cuts. And we're seeing those happening now. I don't know what's happening in your community, but the cuts are already happening in the um, on, the, on the 20th of October, the comprehensive spending review um, will, it, will bring forward the, the government's plan for the 25% over the next four years. But if the economy does go into double dip, and if you read some of the left economic analysis, uh, left economic advisory panel papers, particularly from Graham Turner on the American economy, and he's the expert about what happened in Japan, um, it looks, uh, his forecast is maybe not a double dip, but certainly another form of recession over a much longer period. Um, if you look at that, it's almost certain the government will come back at some time over the next 12 to 18 months and do another tranche and ratchet up the level of cuts that we need. And if you get to that scale, and I agree with you, privatisation is one of the key weapons that they'll use, but if you get to that scale, uh, I think their main focus will be on welfare benefits in particular, but the retrenchment on pensions in particular. There'll be direct cash payments that they'll be looking for because there'll be such a dire financial crisis. Now, I'm not usually one into predicting crises, and I just report back the the, uh, as I say, the LEAP um, group that I chair, which is a group of fairly sober economists, uh, some of whom actually work in the city and uh, 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 have had their predictions proved right over the last 18 months. So uh, if you look at that, instead of this being a short, sharp campaign where we bring the government down or we bring it into crisis, uh, which I, I, I would love to occur, it's more likely that we're into a long period of almost trench warfare in this coalition government. And I don't think the Liberals are going to split off, very suspect, in any great numbers within Parliament, because I think they're like drowning swimmers, yeah. clinging together, and they'll keep each other in power as long as they possibly can. Our objective has got to bring the government down, and that's what this is all about. But I think it's going to be over a longer period of struggle than just one hit, as it was attempted under the poll tax or one strike or, or um, the, the rate capping campaign. And I think we should prepare for that. That's the, the first thing. And I don't find that depressing, I just think that's the reality we should, we should be aware of. The second thing is, in terms of the ideological struggle, the battle of ideas, I think we have to accept that actually three years ago, we've had this discussion time and time again, I suppose, three years ago when they drew the curtains back on the system, the credit crunch occurred, uh, people saw how the system operated in all its crudity, all its greed, bankers, bonuses and all the rest, and there was a real moment when people understood graphically how the system worked. And you've got to almost congratulate the capitalist system, the way that it's closed those curtains again so effectively. And I think ideologically now, we've actually lost that battle. We've lost a lot of the ground that we had available to us in 97. But we've lost it for only a limited period of time, I think, because the cuts discussion in the polling, polling where there's some elements of support for cuts because they see the deficit's got to be addressed, is at a level of abstraction and when it gets down to the reality of people losing their jobs and their local services cuts, that's why I think the local campaigns are so important, people then start questioning why is this happening and is there an alternative and then start thinking, fuck it, I'm not going to put up with it, frankly. And so that's the situation I think we're now engendering that going back into that really potentially productive period of questioning and retaliation. And I agree with everything that's been said, but just finally on this point, 
If you look at the um, structure of the working class as it is at the moment, we have to recognise also at this point of an <coughs> objective assessment of forces that someone made. The reality is that yes, in terms of organised labour, the trade union movement is at half its membership that uh, it was before, and a third under collective bargaining agreements from what it was in, in the 80s. However, it is still the only consistent uh, organised force over a period of time with resources that can resource us at a major campaign. So therefore it is absolutely critical, a battle goes on and waged at every union to push unions into a straightforward anti-cuts, bring down the government campaign. Simple as that. We've established, along, we've got the TUC to move, but I'm an ex-TUC bureaucrat trained in the art of killing off any campaign that can be mobilised as a result of a TUC Congress con resolution. But we've also pushed them into a position where they're having to organise things, but we've also set up nine unions together under TUCG, fighting unions coordinated. And I think that's incredibly important. But can we also say within the Labour Party, whatever happens in this leadership thing this, this afternoon, through the LRC and others, we'll set up a series of demands, which is anti-cuts, looking at the alternatives and all the rest of it, that will be placed as a demand on that new leadership. And a terrain of struggle will open up within the Labour Party again for us on the left. And the LRC was founded to work both within the Labour Party and outside of it. And I think that non-sectarian approach to working together is critical. Finally, I think the social movements that are breaking out now, both the most young people at the climate change campaigners, but also particularly in the anti-cuts campaigns, gives us such a, a vista of opportunity now that we haven't had for a number of years. So I'm incredibly optimistic. The idea of coordination is critical, but I agree with everyone that said there'll be a number of groups seeking to co cooperate, and we should cooperate with them as best we can. This isn't going to be a handed down from above, I agree. This has got to be a grassroots revolt. Some of us call it a revolution. <laughs>